Welcome back, everybody, to the Pittsburgh Pirates franchise here on MLB The Show 20. As today, our Pittsburgh Pirates are two games away from being crowned World Series champions. Last episode, we had games two and three, both of which were wins for our Pirates. Game two on the road, we took five to one, led by a dominant pitching performance by Jamison Tyone. Seven and a third innings, only allowing one run, striking out four batters in the win. And the bats did enough to get the job done, led by home runs from Francisco Mejia and Cabrian Hayes. In Game 3, again, we were led by the pitching. Santiago Osuna with 7 innings, 1 earned run allowed, and 10 strikeouts. Both of our runs were in the 4th inning, solo shots by Wander Franco and Benny Ling, and we were able to get the win. It was good to see Tyone and Osuna pitch really well. They are the top two listed starters in our rotation. However, both of them have struggled throughout the postseason. So it's not only really good to see them finally performing well, but in the World Series, resulting in wins. We got games four and five in this episode. And if we win both games, we win the World Series. So for the first time in this series, we can say in this episode, this Pittsburgh Pirates team could be crowned world champions. But, we still got to take two more. Welcome everybody to PNC Park here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Game 4 of the 2023 World Series is here as the Pittsburgh Pirates take on the Cleveland Indians. Just like Game 3, it is a rainy one here at PNC Park. No weather delays in Game 3. The forecast suggests that we likely won't have any delays here for Game 4, but anything's possible. So far, this World Series has been about dominant pitching performances. And the team who's had the dominant starting pitcher in all three games has so far gotten the win. Adonis Medina getting the start tonight for the Pirates. He's been exquisite in the postseason. He led Pittsburgh to the win over the Nationals in Game 7 of the NLCS. And he gets the start today. He opens up action, striking out the center fielder Oscar Mercado. Francisco Lindor now up at the plate. Apparently, I've been mixing him up with Francisco Mejia this whole time. Because, I mean, both Lindor and Mejia are really good players. But, oh well. As Dylan Carlson makes the catch. 1-2 training for Medina. We go to the bottom of the first. Shane Bieber is in for the Indians. No relations to Justin. But he is this Cleveland Indians team's best pitcher. He has been dominant for a number of years now. And looks to get Cleveland back on track. Here's the leadoff bat. Brian Reynolds grounds it to third. What a play by Austin Riley for the first out of the inning. Getting dirty. Let's take a look at the replay. He falls flat on his chest. That's going to leave a mark. A quick throw for Riley who had a solo home run in game one of the World Series. Here's Pablo Cairo. He goes down looking. 1-1 count now for Josh Bell. Grounds his one to short. Lindor now with a diving play. He gets the out. Francisco Lindor with a great defensive play. And we are tied at 0 through 1. No base runners up to this point. Both pitchers look really good as we go to the top of the second. Brandon Lau crushes it. Deep into right. And this ball is a no-doubter. A solo shot for Lau. And the Cleveland Indians will take a 1-0 lead. Brandon Lau has an extensive history in the postseason. He won the 2020 World Series MVP with Tampa Bay. Won the 2021 AL Playoff MVP with Cleveland. But so far here in this World Series against Pittsburgh, he has been quiet. And now he makes his first big play at the Fall Classic. As he absolutely mashes this ball 433 feet as the Cleveland Indians... We'll take a 1-0 lead. They are on the board first. One away here for Jorge Alfaro. He's going to try to keep the fun going. Gets it past the glove of Pablo Cairo, the 19-year-old rookie out of Venezuela. That'll be a double for Alfaro. And Cleveland has a runner in scoring position with one out. That would bring up Jake Bowers. Full count. He goes down on the curveball. Huge out for Medina and company. Riley now up. Singles it into center. Alfaro will stay at third. And the Indians now have runners on the corners and two outs for the pitcher, 
Shane Bieber, and believe it or not, he's going to clutch up. Bieber with a single and a left. Alfaro will come home and score as the Cleveland Indians will take a 2-0 lead. The inning would come to an end. Naquin will ground out to Josh Bell, who makes the play, but still a big inning for Cleveland. A solo home run by Brandon Lau and an RBI single by the pitcher, Shane Bieber, they do leave a pair of runners on, however, as we go to the bottom of the second. The former Indian, Francisco Mejia, shopping camp. That'll get a quick base runner here for the Pirates, a double for Mejia, who will likely win the NL MVP. He has been dominant in the NLCS, and so far he's been dominant in the World Series. Here's Benny Lane. He's just a window shopper because he's just looking. Getting the corners painted on that pitch. O'Neill Cruz is now up and he swings a little bit too late at the high fastball. Cruz's strike zone is a little bit bigger than everybody else's considering he is 6'7". And, well, it kind of showed on that play. 2 nothing. After 2, let's go to the top of the third. There's Oscar Mercado striking out. Francisco Lindor now up 2-2 pitch. Grounds this one past the glove of Josh Bell. Bell has been incredible defensively in the postseason, however... He will allow that one to drop for a hit. Lindor is now on first with one out for Brandon Lau, who's gone deep today. Does not get that one over the fence, but it will drop for a hit. Lau is now two for two as the Indians have first and second and one out here for Domingo Santana. Grounds it right to Medina. The one six three double play as this Cleveland infield is more chemistry than a science project. Medina gets out of the jam. So far, probably his worst start of the postseason, which doesn't say a lot because his first three starts were outstanding. Bottom of the third, now a nice play by Lau. However, Dylan Carlson is saved at first. Got to give credit to this Cleveland infield, though. They have been playing really well so far defensively. Adonis Medina now going to try to bunt it. Grounds it right to Bieber to endure to Bowers. 1-6-3 double play. The Indians saying, hey, Pirates, what you can do, we can do even better. Brian Reynolds now up to two pitch, and he's going to ground this one weekly to third. Riley, the throw to first is in time, and Shane Bieber is cooking. He has driven in more runs than he's allowed today. Two to nothing. Cleveland leads it through three. On to the fourth inning now. Austin Riley goes down on the two-seamer. Quick inning of work from Adonis Medina. Let's go to the bottom of the fourth inning now. The rookie Pablo Cairo going to lead us off. And Cairo crushes it deep in the left field. You can forget about this ball because it's out of here. Cairo with a solo shot. His first of a World Series. Third of the postseason. And the Pirates will cut the lead in half as it's now 2-1. to one. Pablo Cairo has hit a home run in every postseason series so far. He had one in the NLDS, the NLCS, and now one here in the World Series. One of the most consistent bats on this roster since he got called up in the regular season and then the postseason as well. He's hitting around 350 right now for the playoffs. Continues to dominate. That one was a bomb. 422 feet. Here's Francisco Mejia. Now he's going to tie it. This one goes into right. Liner, and it stays fair. Mejia's second home run of the World Series, ninth of the postseason, which, by the way, breaks an all-time major league record for most home runs by one player in a single postseason. That honor now belongs to Francisco Mejia. Maybe he can try to get that into double digits, be the first player to have double-digit home runs in one postseason. That'd be pretty wild. 1-2 count now, 2 away for Wander Franco. Unfortunately, he's not going to add to the home run parade, but a successful inning nonetheless for the Pittsburgh Pirates as they tie it up at 2 after a pair of solo shots by Pablo Cairo and Francisco Mejia. Top of the 5th now, 3-1 count for Tyler Naquin. He will draw a walk. The Indians have a base runner. 2 away now for Francisco Lindor. He draws a walk as well. So Cleveland is 2-1 and 2 out now for Brandon Lau. Another chance for him to capitalize, and he does just that. Single in the left center. Naquin scores. Lindor will hold up at third. 
And the Cleveland Indians will get the lead right back as it is now 3-2. to two. Runners on the corners and two outs. Still a huge potential at bat for Domingo Santana as he grounds it to short. O'Neill Cruz with the throw to first is in time. However, the Indians do get the lead back off of an RBI single by Brandon Lau, who has now driven in two runs today. Cleveland leads it 3-2 to two, going into the bottom of the fifth. Speaking of O'Neill Cruz, he leads things off as that one gets past the glove of Bieber. A single into center field, and the Pirates are going to start the inning off of a runner. It seems like the bats are starting to play a lot better now. Dylan Carlson now up. Full count pitch, and he grounds this one right to Lau. Dylan Dora to Bowers. 4-6-3 double play, and the base runner that Pittsburgh had is quickly evaporated. Pinch hitter now in the game. It's Travis Swaggerty. He will draw a walk on the full count pitch. Looking at the high fastball. 94, um, 94 miles an hour up and away in the zone. Brian Reynolds now draws a walk as well. As the manager going to have a little talk with Bieber. Two on and two out here for Pablo Cairo. He went deep in his last at bat. Hits this one nicely in his center. However, it would be caught by Cleveland to end the inning, so Pittsburgh leaves a pair of runners on, and if it weren't for the double play by Carlson, who knows, maybe Pittsburgh could have driven some in. Let's go to the sixth inning now. Michael Givens enters for the Pirates. He's had a fairly quiet postseason. This is only his third appearance as his first batter, Jorge Alfaro, will get that one to go right off of his calf. That one certainly is going to leave a mark. I imagine Givens is going to feel that one for the next couple days. However, he's going to be a tough cookie and hang in there. So credit for Givens for staying in. Jake Bowers now. Full count pitch. He's going to hit this one nicely into right for a single. As the Indians now the pair of runners on and one out for Shane Bieber. He's going to go for the bunt. Pittsburgh is going to go for the double play. And, well, they get one runner out. Bowers is going at second. However... Bieber stays alive at first, and the inning will survive. Runners on the corners here for Tyler Naquin. Grounds it to second. Franco makes the play. That will end the inning as Michael Gibbons gets out of a little bit of a jam there. 3-2 to two is your score as we move on to the bottom of the sixth inning. Bieber still chilling in the ball game as here's Josh Bell. Hits this one nicely over the glove of Lindor for a hit. Josh Bell was obviously a, a maniac in the NLDS. He's been a little bit quieter in the NLCS in the World Series, but he has certainly contributed positively, especially on defense. Mejia now grounds it right to Lau, and again, Pittsburgh has an early double play to open up the inning. Not really what you want to see there, especially for Mejia, who his bat has been so good as of recent. Benny Lane now grounds this one to... Boston Riley, who bobbles it, does throw it to first in time, and the Indians get out of that inning. 3-2 three to two with three innings to go as we go to the seventh now. Francisco Mejia, no, not Mejia, Francisco Lindor with the base hit. I, I told you, I, I get these two mixed up because I'm so used to saying Mejia. Here is Lau now. He will ground into an infield single, Givens tried to get the double play. Instead, nobody's out. As here is Domingo Santana now. He will go down on the slider. Two away. We'll see if Givens gets out of another jam. The answer is, it appears, yes. Now Foro grounds out to Wander Franco. That'll end the inning as Givens. Two scoreless frames, but he does allow quite a few base runners. Nonetheless, it is still 3-2 as we advance to the bottom of the seventh inning. Shane Bieber still in it. His pitch count over 100. You don't really see that too often in modern day baseball anymore as Carlson grounds it out to Riley. A 1-2-3 inning there for Shane Bieber. Seven innings, two earned runs. I would imagine that would likely end his day. Speaking of new pitchers, Emmanuel Classe, the former Cleveland Indian, will check into the game here in the top of the eighth. Classe's tenure in Cleveland was very brief, but he was an Indian nonetheless as he strikes out Jake Bowers there. Two away for the pinch hitter, Cesar Hernandez. He will draw a walk, so Hernandez is aboard safely. 
That would bring up Tyler Naquin. Full count, and he will go at the 99 mile an hour cutter. Lings throw to first is in time, so despite the late walk by Cesar Hernandez, the Indians are not able to drive in any run. Score remains 3-2 to two as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Pittsburgh has two innings to make this comeback. The former Pirate, Ryan Presley, will check into the game. Presley was on Pittsburgh last year as a free agent, obviously left this offseason to sign with the Cleveland Indians. Here's a pinch hitter. Cabrian Hayes leading things off. He got a beautiful curveball right down the middle. And he looks at it. That could be costly. Cabrian Hayes has been quite good in the postseason. In limited at bats, I will say he has played well, but that was a pitch he could have taken. Here is Brian Reynolds now. Full count as this one will go into left. Santana totally misses the dive. The ball instead falls flat on his back. Reynolds fought about two, but will retreat to first. So now the Pirates have a base runner. Full count here. Two outs for Josh Bell, and this one will go into left for a single. Bell with his second hit of the day. So Pittsburgh has two on and two outs. A huge at bat here for Francisco Mejia, who, again, has been so good in the postseason, but has not been great with runners on base. As Brad Hand will check in. A little lefty action as he tries to get out of this one. And Mejia goes down on the two-seamer. Hand will survive the inning. Presley does not even make it out of the eighth. As we go to the ninth. Wander Suero will answer for the Pirates. He's had an outstanding postseason. Ten and two-thirds innings. He's only allowed one run. And it's been a big reason why this pitching has been so successful. One away for Lindor. He will strike out. Two gone now for Brandon Lau. The 2-2 pitch, and this one is grounded to first. Bell will make the play. So that will bring us to the bottom of the ninth inning. The score is 3-2. The Pirates only need one. That's all they need to tie it up, but it's going to be a challenge. The bats have been pretty quiet for the most part since the fourth inning. They've gotten some spotty base runners here and there, but have not been able to drive any in. Nick Whitgren is on for the save. He's 5-for-5 five five in save opportunities this postseason. Benny Ling going to lead the inning off. A weak pop fly into foul territory. Riley under it for the first out of the inning. One gone, two away. That would bring up Wander Franco now. Full count. And this one is grounded into center for a base hit. The tying run is on board. And the potential go-ahead run is at the plate. Here's O'Neill Cruz. 2-1. Grounds it right to Lau. To Lindor. To Bowers. And the game is still alive. The Indians do not turn the double play. Franco is out at second. However, Cruz is safe at first. Dylan Carlson now 3-2 pitch. Grounds it to Francisco Lindor over to Lau. And the Cleveland Indians win game four of the 2023 World Series by the final score of 3-2. A very close one throughout. The bullpens were phenomenal. Shane Bieber with the win. Seven innings. Only allowing two runs. Adonis Medina gets the loss. Medina with his worst postseason outing. Now, he wasn't bad today, but wasn't the same Medina that we've seen in the NLDS and NLCS. He pitched five innings, allowed three runs, had a few strikeouts here and there. Brandon Lau went deep for the Indians. He drove in two runs. Shane Bieber drove in the other. He was obviously great. For Pittsburgh, the offense just never got consistent. And whenever runners were on base... We weren't capitalizing, either grounding into too many double plays or there were two outs and we just didn't get lucky. The only, the only runs today were solo home runs by Pablo Cairo and Francisco Mejia. And unfortunately, well, that was the difference considering the Pirates only lost by one. So now we enter a pivotal Game 5. This World Series is tied up at 2-2. Two two. Nobody will be clinching the World Series today. And this is the final home game at PNC Park this season. This series will of the Game 6. That will be in Cleveland. And if there is a Game 7, that one will also be in Cleveland. So the World Series champion will be crowned in Cleveland regardless of who wins. Nonetheless, the Pirates want to show out one final time here in the 2023 season for their home crowd. We'll see if they can do it. It's been a series about pitching. And, I mean, you need strong pitching staffs and strong bullpens in the World Series. 
Jamison Tyone is getting the start today for the Pirates on short rest. He pitched a gem in Game 2 of the World Series. And now he is already ready for Game 5. Don't expect him to go more than 5 or 6 innings, but... Pittsburgh chose him over Lance Lynn and Jordan Yamamoto as there is Mercado lining out. An excellent defensive play by Josh Bell. 1-2 count now for Francisco Mejia. Going to ground this one over to second. Franco will make the play. And a quick 1-2-3 of work from Jamison Tyone. I guess Tyone is only good in the regular season and in the World Series. He's not good in the other playoff series. I don't know. Steven Matz getting the start today for Cleveland. It doesn't feel like they fully trust him. He's only pitched four and a third innings in the postseason. He's allowed four runs. And has really not been all that impressive. We'll see if he can change that narrative today. As here's Wander Franco with one out. Hits it nicely in the left and it stays fair. Franco will head to second. Sliding safely. And the Pirates have a runner in scoring position with one out. Their two best hitters, Josh Bell and Francisco Mejia are the next two batters up. Here is Bell. Full count, and he's going to draw a walk. This does set a force out at second and third. However, nonetheless, the Pirates have two runners on base here for Francisco Mejia. Deep ball into left center at the track at the wall, and it is caught. Franco will advance to third, and the Pirates have runners in scoring position with two outs. A potentially huge at bat here. For Benny Ling, a little lefty on lefty crime. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Ling hits this one nicely into left, but not nicely enough. Santana is under it for the catch. And the score will remain tied at zero as Matz gets out of a jam through one. Let's enter the top of the second inning now. We'll see if either team can start some movement offensively. As here's Brandon Lau. Hits this one into right center field for a hit. And the Indians... Going to start the inning off with a base runner. Let's see if they can try to score some runs here as Brandon Lau has played really well in these past couple games after starting the World Series quiet. Santana now grounds into the double play, so the base runner was pretty much for nothing. And there is now two away. That would bring up Jorge Alfaro, the catcher. 1-1 one, one pitch here from Tyone. He delivers, and Alfaro gets a single into right so again another nice hit for the indians but now there are two outs and they've got to get a few hits to go together we'll see if they can do it here's jake bowers now full count pitch hits this one fairly nicely into center brian reynolds is under it he will make the catch so despite two hits the indians do not drive anybody home one runner is stranded and this game will remain tied at zero as we advance now to the bottom of the second We'll see if the Pirates now can start to beat up on Steven Matz. Full count here for O'Neill Cruz, and this one will be caught. A circus-like play by Francisco Lindor. Obviously, he's known for his offense, but he's also one of the best defensive shortstops in the game. One, two now for Carlson. They're going to say he went around. I don't think he did, but nonetheless, that will be counted as a strikeout. And that will end the inning. Tied at zero through two. Let's go to the top of the third now. Tyler Naquin up and hits this one nice to second. A liner and it will be caught by Wonder Franco. That'll end the top of the third. A quick inning for Tyone and the crew. Let's go to the bottom of the third. Speaking of Tyone, he leads the inning off. And he's going to rip a single into right. So in a game that is so far... Had a lot of dominant pitching and not a whole lot of hitting. It's good to see the pitcher getting on base. However, Pablo Cairo, who gets on base about as good as anybody, will go down looking. Wander Franco now grounds it to third. Riley to Lau over to Jake Bowers. The Indians turn the double play. And through three innings, no damage has been done. And we are tied at zero. Top of the fourth now. Here's Francisco Mejia. Not Mejia. Francisco Lindor. Jesus Christ. Hits a single into right with one out as the Indians now have themselves a nice base runner for Brandon Lau. 3-1 pitch. That would have been a ball. That would have been a walk, but instead it's a double play. The Pirates infield is able to clutch up quick enough 
And Tyone now with four scoreless. Bottom of the fourth now. Mejia hits that one over the head of Steven Matz for a base hit. Both teams are getting base runners, but neither offense is just scoring any runs. Mejia with the single. He's pretty excited about it. Two away now for Brian Reynolds. He grounds it to short. Lindor with one hell of a play. He will get it to Lau to end the inning. What a defensive play by Francisco Lindor. Tied at zero through four. Three hits for both teams as we go to the fifth. This could be Jamison Tyone's last inning, even though he has been dominant. As with two away, the Indians are going to get a single. Tyone's inning is not quite over yet. Still got some work to do. That was Bowers with the hit. Austin Riley now. Weak fly out to first in foul territory. Josh Bell under it. He will make the catch. So that'll do it through the top of the fifth. We're essentially halfway done this game. And still, neither team has yet scored. Let's go to the bottom of the fifth now. Steven Matt's pitching count is really low. He's only at 52. That's impressive. As O'Neill Cruz grounds it to Lindor, a very nice defensive play by Lindor. As I will say, obviously there's been a lot of good pitching in the World Series, but both of these defenses, and specifically in the infield, have been very good. A lot of double plays, a lot of diving plays, as is being shown right there by Francisco Lindor, who's had a number of diving plays in this game alone. Here comes Brian Hayes now, and is a pinch hitter. This signals that Jamison Tyone's day is done. He pitched around 80 pitches. Holy cow, what a play by Austin Riley. Was that like friggin' LeBron James out there with that vertical leap? Holy cow. What a jump by Austin Riley. The big fella's getting up there. But anyway, Jamison Tyone's day is done through five. He was awesome, did not allow any runs. Only struck out one batter though, which is weird. Julio Urias will enter the game. He's going to try to get a couple of innings in. I don't believe he's pitched since the NLDS or early in the NLCS. He's not pitched in a while. As Urias will allow the walk to Naquin. Oscar Mercado now draws a walk. That pitch looked like a strike for what it's worth. So now the Indians have two runners on and one away. Here's Francisco Lindor. Grounds this one to short. Cruz to Franco to Bell and the Pirates turn. The double play. Pittsburgh gets out of the jam. And this game will remain tied at zero as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Matz is still chilling as Pablo Cairo can open up the inning with a walk. Quiet game so far up until the walk for Cairo. One away now for Josh Bell. This is prime double play territory, isn't it? Well, that's what it appears as the Indians do turn two. Cairo and Bell were both barely out at their respective bags, but they were out nonetheless. Still, no blood has been shed through six innings. Let's go to the top of the seventh now, see if things change. One away for Domingo Santana. Urias still in the game, by the way. That'll be a single for Santana. Can this be the spark that the Indians need to finally get on the scoreboard? Here's Jorge Alfaro now. He's going to look at the low slider. That's ball four. He draws a walk. Cleveland again has two one and one out. The control so far has been an issue for Urias. As that will bring up Austin Riley. Single into center. Santana being waved home. The throw from Reynolds is not in time. And finally, a run has been scored. An RBI single for Austin Riley. Domingo Santana scores. Steven Matz trying to keep the offensive barrage going. He's unsuccessful as he strikes out. But finally, a run has been scored. An RBI single for Riley, and it is one to nothing in favor of the Indians through the top of the seventh. Bottom seven now, two away for Reynolds as this one is jammed to second. That'll end the inning. Steven Matz is just cooking right now. He just looks unstoppable at this point. Top of the eighth now, Rysel Iglesias will enter for the Pirates. He's been very consistent in six postseason appearances. He's allowed two runs. This is his seventh appearance as he gets Naquin to go down fishing on the slider. Let's take a look at the starting pitching in comparison. So, Mats and Tyone have combined for 12 innings today. Zero earned runs, 
he had only three strikeouts. Tyon only struck out one batter, and Matt so far only has two. And one of them was the Dylan Carlson play, which I didn't think Carlson swung, if you remember earlier in the game. There's Lindor. He grounds out to second. A quick inning from Iglesias as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Again, Pittsburgh only is down by one. They can certainly come back if the offense just decides to, I don't know, show up for once. 2-2 pitch for O'Neill Cruz. He gets fooled by the outside slider, but it actually goes in his favor. A single for Cruz, and the Pirates have a runner on base here for Dylan Carlson, who's grounded into quite a few double plays recently. This one is no exception. Whenever the Pirates start innings off with singles, it feels like they immediately ground into double plays. That's how it's been all day today, and for quite a bit of a postseason, the amount of double plays this Pirates team has had is pretty wild. Nico Goodrum in as a pinch hitter. He grounds out to Jake Bowers. Eight innings down, and the Cleveland Indians lead this one one to nothing. Let's see if they can hold things down in the ninth inning and take a 3-2 World Series lead. Wonder Suero will enter the game, his ninth postseason appearance. He's been the Pirates' best pitcher, I would say, regardless of being a starter or a reliever. As there is Brandon Lau going to lead off the inning with a solo shot into right. Lau is going upstairs where Grandma hides the cookies. And the Cleveland Indians will take a 2-0 lead. Brandon Lau with a big performance here in games 4 and 5. One of the main catalysts for Cleveland winning earlier today and potentially one of the main catalysts for Cleveland winning this game. It looked like a liner, but it got over the fence. That all That's all that matters. 407 feet, and it is now 2 to nothing. Here is Domingo Santana. He will strike out as Wander Suero tries to get back into a groove. Jorge Alfaro now goes down on the high cutter. Excellent pitch by Wander Suero. He's starting to feel himself again, ladies and gentlemen. Full count now for Jake Bowers, as this one will not get past the glove of O'Neill Cruz. A really good defensive play, saving a base hit. So that'll bring us to the bottom of the ninth inning. All Pittsburgh needs is one. Mats will stay in the game. Top of the order is up for the Pirates. Pablo Cairo leading things off, and he grounds out to short. Mats has really been fooling these batters with a lot of low pitches that the Pirates are taking. Here's Wander Franco. He's going to go down on the low sinker. Rounds this one to second. And the Indians are one out away from winning their third game here in the 2023 World Series. Josh Bell is at the plate, though. This is dangerous territory for Cleveland as Bell hits this one nicely into right. Does not look deep enough, and it is caught by the Indians. And Cleveland wins game three off of a complete game shutout from Steven Matz. The Indians take a 3-2 series lead here with a commanding game five victory. And Steven Matz will now go down as a World Series hero regardless if Cleveland wins one of the final two games or not. In the most important game of his life, Matz certainly capitalized. And despite five shutout innings, from Jamison Tyone, it was not enough. Let's take a look at the box score. The Indians offense was not all that good today. Two runs on seven hits of the home run by Brandon Lau in the ninth inning, and then Austin Riley with the RBI single. Obviously, Steven Matz was great. I'm a little bit surprised he only struck out two batters the entire game. Pittsburgh consistently put the bat to the ball, but just too many ground balls. A lot of grounders this game for the Pirates. Only four hits and obviously zero runs for Pittsburgh. The only extra base hit was a double, I think, in the first inning by Wander Franco. Jamison Tyone gets the no decision. Despite only striking out one batter, he was awesome. The loss goes to Julio Urias, who allowed the first run in the seventh, and then Wander Suero allowed the other run in the ninth. Rysel Iglesias did have a shutout eighth inning, so good for him. So not the episode we were hoping for. We entered things today up 2-1, to one, talking about how if we win both games, we are the World Series champions. But Cleveland won both games. They now lead the Series 3-2. to two. So next episode will be Game 6 and only Game 6. If we win, we will have a Game 7, which will be in a separate episode. And if we lose, the Indians are the World Champions, and we got to get back to the drawing board and try to figure out how to get this team over the hump. 
Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Make sure to stay safe. I'm out. Adios, amigos.